Alright, welcome. We're going to be doing chapter 11, uh, Reinforce Your Skills and Apply Your Skills. So this is for uh, QuickBooks Online. We're using the Labyrinth uh, textbook for QuickBooks Online 2022-23. Uh, so we're in uh, Reinforce Your Skills, Chapter 11 again, 11-1. And so what it wants us to do here is it wants us to run a couple of reports and just uh, check some balances, make sure that they tie together. So this is going to be the first report we run is going to be here. Uh, we're going to go into Standard. And the first report we're going to run is the uh, Trial Balance. And it's going to be uh, ended September 30th, 26. Uh, the, end, the beginning date really doesn't matter for us. It's a balance. And so it's just going to be the snapshot at the end date is what it's going to do for us there. So we're going to go ahead and run the report. And here we go. There it is. Uh, we can, if we want to kind of save it and compare, because we're going to be comparing two uh, side by side. I'm going to go ahead and throw it out into a PDF, uh, save PDF, there it is, it showed up on the bottom there. So that PDF I can now pull aside and uh, I will be able to compare that to my next report that I'm going to pull up. So my next report is going to be uh, inventory valuation. And it's going to be inventory valuation summary. Same end date, September 30, 26. There we go. Okay, so that is my inventory valuation summary. I noticed the total on the bottom here is $528.30. That's all my inventory. So that should be my inventory balance on my trial balance. Let's go ahead and pull that back in here. So we're looking for 528.30. And sure enough, here it is right there. There's my inventory asset, 528.30. So I match. So that looks good. So we're doing good so far. So that's 11-1. That's what we're supposed to do there just to make sure everything balances out. Now we're going to move on here to 11-2 uh, is what we're going to do next. And so with that one, we are going to do a journal entry. So it says here that we're going to be doing some depreciation for some equipment. And so uh, we're going to be doing that, make sure we get the right date. That's usually the first thing that we want to put on there. So that's going to be 9-30-26. So that'll be our journal entry date. And then we're going to pick out our account. So the way it works with depreciation is we, of course, have an expense account that we're going to use. So we'll, we'll pull up our depreciation expense account. There's an other expense. That's the depreciation expense right there. And that'll be our debit. Expenses are debits typically, right, when we increase them. And so now we're going to have accumulating depreciation. So we don't have any other depreciation in there. So we're going to go ahead and uh, type this in. There's accumulated depreciation. We're going to add new. We're going to pull it up. This is going to be fixed asset, accumulated depreciation, there we go, and that is it, save and close. So that's an asset, it actually, the actual account type that accumulated depreciation is, is it's actually a contra asset. So it sits uh, together with our asset account, which in this case is some equipment, and so it's going to be attached to that and it's going to be contra to, so opposite of, right? So our asset usually is sitting there as a debit. This will be a credit is what it's going to be. Okay, so our um, 
So we're, we're going to do just one month. And so we're going to try out the math function here in our cell. And so we've got, uh, let's see here, $16,000. That's how much our fixed asset is. And we're going to divide it by... Uh, we're going to divide it by uh, five months worth, which is five times twelve. So that's going to be uh, our thirty. Let's see here, sixty, right? So that's going to be it. Let's see if that calculates for us. There we go. So that, so it, if we put it in, we don't have to put the equal sign in like we do with Excel. So we just have to put the math in. And it'll do the math for us. Again, it's going to be 16,000 divided by 60 months, which is five years. So there we go. So those are our entries, debit and credit. We can also put as a description, it's going to be uh, adjustment for depreciation. There we go. So that's our description there. Copy and paste it down there. And then we've got our journal entry. Uh, this one is going to be uh, one of the things you want to do over here at the end of this journal entry is you want to make sure you have the class as kennel. So that's going to be part of our depreciation will be attached to the kennel part of what we do. Okay, so now we're going to go on. We're going to do, uh, let's see, 11-3. So what we're going to do with this one is, it says we went and we took uh, inventory. So we actually counted inventory manually. And we realized that uh, we were off on our count for Uber Jive Balls. So that's, that's an inventory item. And it says that there's only 11 uh, Uber Jive Balls. So what we need to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to do our inventory quantity adjustment. Make sure we have the right date, which that is correct. It's going to be the end of September 26. Uh, inventory adjustment account, that is what it is. We're going to leave it there. Uh, the product is going to be our Uber Jive Balls. Quantity on hand, our new quantity is going to be 11. So that is a change of 4. And then, of course, our class that we're going to put in there uh, is going to be kennel. So if we don't put a class in there, it's going to squawk at us. And so we want to make sure we at least classify all these things and according to class it will help make our data better for us and so we're going to go ahead and save and close that okay so now we're done with the reinforce your skills so now we're going to hop over this is going to be the apply your skills is what we're going to be doing next so on the apply your skills we're going to be pulling up some reports here and these reports are going to be what we're going to submit for grading for the apply your skills so the very first one here is going to be we're pulling up a balance sheet so that's going to be our balance sheet here and this one's going to be ended September 30 26 that's the balance sheet we're going to have so there we have it and then we're going to, uh, of course, save that out there to Excel. And then our next thing we want to do here, uh, well, we wanted to check, let's, let's go back. We just need to check our balances and make sure they're good. I think mine were. We're just going to double check. So when you pull that out, make sure your balances are checking with the check figures that you have in the book there. So our total assets are going to be 77,779.9. And then our total liabilities are going to be 
6595 $6,595.73. So those check out. So that was good. Okay, so our next one here is we're going to do our profit and loss statement. And we are going to alter this just a little bit. So there's our profit and loss. We're going to bring that up. And we're going to um, give it some dates here. This is going to be July 1st, 26. That's going to go to September 30, 26. And then we're going to do a percentage income for each row. Uh, and so that's going to be something that we're going to do. Uh, so here we're able to pick display columns. We That's okay. We've got that here. We're going to add in our percentages. This is going to be percentage of row. Um, that one's going to be percentage of income is what we're going to do. So everything by our income has a percentage of our total income. That's what we're going to be using there. So that's what it looks like. Of course our bottom check figure on this one is our net loss here. and It should be 81.44 percent. That not only checks our actual net income, which is this amount, uh, $3,815.83, but it also checks because this percent takes into account the income. So if our income is off, right here, here's our total income. If our income is off and it's not this, then the bottom percentage will not be the correct percentage. So it checks for two things on that one. So we can go ahead and save that one there. And then those are the two that we're gonna, we're, we are going to submit. So the last thing we're going to do here is we are going to go back to our reports. And we are going to pull up the management report. So that's something that we do in Chapter 11 as we talk a little bit about management reports. And so... It wants us to pull a, a package here where we have our reports, and that's going to be in our company overview. We're going to edit that, and then we're going to go down here to reports, and we can change the reports that are found in our company uh, report package, the management report that we pull up. So those are going to be our balance sheet, our profit and loss statement, and sales by product uh, slash service summary. So that's going to be our new report we're going to add in here. It's going to be a sales by product service summary right there. That one right there. So what we're going to have. So that one will be added into that. And so we're just going to be uh, saving that. Uh, we can change this. We'll just go ahead and do save and uh, then that's going to be our uh, new one right there. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. Uh, okay, hold on. We're, we'll change this just a little bit here. I'll put my initials on that. There we go. So now on the, under the management reports, there's the company overview. And so I can go ahead and uh, run that period on there and so view it and then it'll come up. That's all my management reports for whatever period I select there. So that's going to be something. You're not going to need to submit that one for grading, but that's just kind of get you in there and has you, has you do that. Um, so we also... Uh, at the very end here, the very end of chapter 11, we're going to close the books. So this looks a little different than um, than the book kind of shows, and I'll show you what the difference is. So we're going to go into account and settings. We're going to go ahead and do advanced. Uh, on the very top of this accounting function, go ahead and click on that. It'll it'll let us edit it, 
and then we're going to click this little slide. This is the close, uh, close the books. Um, in the book, in, at least in my edition that I have, it has a checkbox. That's what it used to be. Now it is a slide, so we're going to slide that. Our closing date on this one is going to be September 30. You do not want to do this unless you know that your balances and everything check out. So don't close the books until you know everything's set. So you've got to have everything set and then close the books. That's the idea of having this to last. So just make sure you have that set uh, and then you're you're good to go. So um, let's see, so it's 2026. And then we're gonna wanna flip this to allow changes after viewing a warning and entering password. So that is it right there. So our password, we wanna make sure we update that and just to know, make sure that we know what it is. Um, I wanna make sure they're the same. There we go. All right, so that's set. So that's going to be it. We're going to just make sure to go in and grab those, grab that balance sheet and that uh, profit and loss statement that you uh, saved out there and downloaded. Make sure to get that back up into the system for grading. And that's chapter 11. Thanks. Bye.